I'm Onika, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Daniel, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Ralston. I've been a professional chef for 10 years. The turkey sandwich that I'm gonna make today is gonna be a little twist to it. I'm going to chop up my turkey, stir fry it. I'm using a croissant and I have a little secret sauce. So when you bite into my turkey sandwich, you're gonna know you felt a little tingling in your spirit. Today I will be making a gooey gobbler sandwich, which uh, is basically turkey and peanut butter with a couple added fixins to really tie the whole thing together and make it a little Thanksgiving themed. It is for sure weird, but it is delicious. Today I'm gonna make for you a comfy turkey sandwich. A layer of turkey topped with pickled collard greens, slathered with turkey gravy. What else do you need? Now for a turkey sandwich, you gotta start with turkey. Turkey breasts like this as opposed to deli slices, just because I think you get a little bit more flavor than just like the regular flimsy turkey slices. This is my deli turkey. I like to get smoked turkey. It has all these flavors in it already. Look at it, it's so pretty. Confit is really just a preservation technique. You cook the dark meat, or any meat, in fat, and it lends to a bunch of flavor. So first, I'm gonna cut my garlic straight across. I'm gonna put the, the turkey in the pan. And because we're not gonna do any browning or anything, it's just gonna be really slow cooking. I'm gonna add the garlic, fresh thyme and sage, the oil. I'm just gonna add all of the butter. You don't have to peel the onions because you just want to get the flavor. Imagine it just being like a tea. It's gonna be super delicious. Now that I have all the ingredients in the pan, I'm gonna put this in the oven for three to four hours. So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna chop up my turkey. So I like a thicker cut, not too thin. Quarter inch slice of turkey, something like that. Maybe like two of these. You don't really need two too much. You wanna put some meat in your turkey sandwich. You wanna look at the turkey sandwich and be like, this is too much, this is just too much for me, it's just too much. But you know it's just enough. The turkey's ready, now we're gonna shred it. It's falling apart, I don't have to do anything. Just make sure you get all the bones out, especially this guy. I love some deli turkey, but this is next level. Okay, so you're gonna heat your pan. Look at that butter. We're gonna add our turkey to the pan. Slice this cheese down a little bit. I like the pepper jack cheese because it is a thug of cheeses. And this is quick and easy, actually. You just wanna give it a little love. Here you have it. Crunchy, juicy, my turkey's done. done. So we've got some extra fixins for the turkey sandwich. Our next step is to make our pickled collard greens. With the fattiness of the meat, you want to balance it out with some kind of acid, whether it's, you know, lime or, in this case, vinegar, and that comes with pickling. Pickled collard greens? Oh no, what kind of bougie stuff is that? What, no, what is happening? I know, pickled collard greens. Yes, you've heard that right. I'll be making a sweet potato puree. This is a quick way to add some sweetness and also not dry your mouth out. First things first, going to peel some sweet potatoes. These are going right into the oven. I'm not doing anything fancy with them really. So I'm just gonna cut them. I'm gonna make my magic sauce. It's gonna be a little different. It's gonna have a little kick to it, a little sweet. When you bite into my sandwich, you're gonna be like, what the heck is that? And I'm just gonna sit there like this. So let's get started. Sandwich spread. I'm gonna add a little chipotle hot sauce in it, just a smidgen. So first I'm going to make the brine. And to make this brine, I'm gonna add water, then the vinegar, red pepper flakes, sugar, cinnamon stick, star anise, two cloves of garlic here. So I put a little Cajun seasoning in it to give it a little kick so the sweet, it just balances it out. A little black pepper, Corn. because black pepper ain't never hurt nobody. I'm using these flavors because it's what's really familiar to me. You know, you have spiciness, and I'm from the islands, and we have like the star anise and the cinnamon stick, and a little bit of heat. I'm going to bring this up to a boil, let all the flavors melt together, and I'm gonna let it cool. And we're back. <laughs> Sweet potatoes are out of the oven. Throw all these delicious little bits into the food processor, and pulse a couple times. It's a sandwich. So you need lettuce and tomatoes. And so, what I'm going to do is remove the stems, put them in the hot water, and cool them down really quickly with the ice bath. I'm removing the collard greens from the ice bath, and I'm squeezing some of the water out. 
If you don't, it may throw off the ratio of your brine. Then we add the brines and that would break them down a bit. We're gonna let the collard greens sit in the brine for a minimum of 24 hours. Honey and maple syrup were always things that my mom added whenever she would make her like sweet potato dish for the holidays. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon. I love cinnamon, so I might add a little more than you might. Got some nutmeg and also clove and allspice, which rounds it out nicely. So I'm gonna slice these tomatoes. She's so juicy. Hey, boo. Butter's in there and a splash of vanilla extract. And we will pulse that again. I don't measure, so I think it's important to taste as you go. Okay. Mm. Oh, this is perfect. It's the perfect blend of heat, hot, and sweet. Oh yeah. I promise you, if I didn't tell you it was pickled collard greens and I just gave you the sandwich, you would eat it and love it. Well, you can't have a sandwich without bread. I feel like croissants need to be used more, especially in sandwiches. I think a croissant for a sandwich is a great idea. It's flaky, it's buttery, it's airy. It gives it a je ne sais quoi. So I've got here just some sandwich bread, some multi-grain sandwich bread. Multi-grain tastes like cardboard paper. And here we have pumpernickel bread. Pumpernickel is like an, it's an acquired taste. Some people love it, some people hate it. I don't think I'm a pumpernickel fan. Hot take, not for me. Now it's time to slice the bread. I slice it in the middle because it's usually like the widest part. It looks like a pocket, a meat pocket. And do a triple decker. You heard it here first. Well, double decker, right? Triple the bread, twice the uh, filling. I'm notorious for burning bread. So they didn't give me a skillet today. They gave me a toaster, which is honestly perfect. Gonna throw these two pieces of bread in the toaster. I see the highest setting on this is seven. So I'm gonna go like four and a half. And hopefully that should be all you have to do. And I didn't grow up with a toaster. I like to use the hot pan to toast my bread because it yields a better result. Like some just heat her up a little bit. I butter both sides, but I usually toast one side longer than the other side. And once you get the crunch on the outside, then it's soft on the inside. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Nice and toasty, nice and warm, a little golden. So this may not be as quick as a toaster, but I really love the results. So now I got all my stuff ready. Now it's time to assemble the sandwich. When people say a sandwich, they don't mean do 18 million steps. Just a sandwich. It's just a sandwich. So with that in mind, we're gonna start with the bread, followed by the gravy, then the turkey, collard greens, another layer of bread, gravy, turkey, collard greens, gravy again, bread. First thing. Peanut butter is going on one of the slices. Now, I love peanut butter. Use as much as you'd like. At this point, I think I've lost some people. I'll try it. It, it could be the same as if you had like a peanut sauce with turkey in it. It might be fine. Nobody's putting peanut butter on their turkey sandwich. That's not true. What, why? Stay with me. I promise, I promise it'll be good. So you got a layer of peanut butter. Cranberry sauce. This is like our faux jam. Like peanut butter and jelly, this is gonna be the makeshift jelly. I'm gonna put that on the same side that I have the peanut butter on. Look how pretty she looks. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna take a little bit of my secret sauce. I'm gonna spread her wide, wide and low. This is some gravy that's made from the bones from the turkey. On the other side, on the other piece of bread, butter side up. I'm going to add the sweet potato puree. This is the this is the money right here. This adds some sweetness, adds a little bit of a spice. I love sweet potatoes, so I might put a little bit extra on this. You want a generous amount of turkey. You don't want to you know, be skimpy with this. Put your lettuce on. My pickled collards. Get tomato. Put a little bit more gravy. Go a little higher here. And then some more collards. Some more gravy. Wow. Let's cut the sandwich, right? Oh boy. There we go. And this is my turkey sandwich. And this is my gooey gobbler turkey sandwich. And this is my turkey sandwich, AKA the Ralston.
All right, now here's the moment of truth. Oh, what was I thinking? Just kidding, it's awesome. I'm enjoying this. It is amazing. I did a good job. And the pepper jack, the way it meshes inside the meat and on top of the meat, it just gives it a whole other layer. You got the sweetness of the cranberry sauce and a little bit of added like mouth velvety feel from the peanut butter. It's so good. If this isn't selling you on it, I don't know what will. <laughs> it's, it's really good. I swear, try it, try it. You'll thank me for it. This is so good. It makes you want to open up a sandwich shop. And this will be the only thing in there I'm selling. The pickled collard greens. That is the move. I'm telling you, it's the Ralston. It's going to be a thing. Turkey sandwiches are a delicious go-to for so many people when it comes to lunch or dinner. Let's see how each of our three talented chefs made theirs. Onika used processed deli turkey meat. It has all these flavors in it already. Look at it, it's so pretty. There's many ways to process turkey deli meat, but mostly it's cured or smoked white meat with water, sugar, and salt, or a brine solution added. Daniel used white breast meat, which is lower in myoglobin and cytochrome pigments, hence the lighter color. Ralston used dark meat, which is higher in fat and pigments. It's also more vascular in that it has more capillaries than white meat because legs and thighs are muscles used for locomotion, and so they need a constant supply of oxygen, unlike the white breast meat. I've heard after eating turkey, people usually get sleepy. That doesn't happen to me. Some people think turkey makes you sleepy. It's true that turkey meat contains the amino acid tryptophan that's part of a neurotransmitter called serotonin. Serotonin plays multiple biologically complex roles in metabolism like healthy sleep patterns and mood stabilization. Here's the catch though. Tryptophan is found in many foods like chicken, beef, salmon, eggs, and even nuts and oatmeal, but these foods don't have the same association with sleepiness. I think sometimes we overindulge on Thanksgiving, the big turkey eating holiday, and we just need an app to digest it all. Ralston pickled collard greens with a 24-hour process that elevates his level three turkey sandwich. Collards grow as long individual leaves with shorter fibrous stems. Ralston finely chopped the collards, which tenderized them by disrupting the fibrous stems. He didn't waste any of this beautiful leafy vegetable. He quickly blanched them, setting the beautiful green color. The brining keeps the collards slightly crisp and adds a salty, slightly acidic flavor, which counteracts some of the bitterness that is naturally occurring in collards from the compound phenylthiocarbamide. Onika used a buttery croissant for her turkey sandwich. I feel like croissants should need to be used more, especially in sandwiches. Croissants are made from laminated dough where slabs of butter are incorporated into a dough, which is folded and turned so that you end up with layers of buttery flakiness. Daniel used multigrain, which means that more than one grain was incorporated while making this type of bread. I chose to keep the bread simple today. <laughs> Grains other than wheat, like barley, add little to no gluten and cause a slightly denser bread. It's usually a bit darker and higher in fiber from the additional various dark roasted grains. Ralston used pumpernickel bread. Pumpernickel is a type of sourdough bread that's been around since the 16th century and starts with dark whole grain rye flour that goes through several stages of lactic acid fermentation. It's baked over a long time at a lower temperature so it doesn't have the thick crust. The low baking temperature allows some starch and protein enzymes to remain active, producing free sugars and amino acids that lend flavors and a sweetness that makes it unique. It's very dark in color from the Maillard reaction and caramelization of the free sugars and amino acids. It's a wonderful and delicious choice for Ralston's turkey sandwich. I don't think I'm a pumpernickel fan. Whether for lunch or dinner, turkey isn't just for the holidays. We hope you'll take some of these tips from our three outstanding chefs next time you're making your favorite turkey sandwich.